I'm thrilled to be here in beautiful British Columbia meeting leaders who are making a difference both at home and abroad. Today I'm with Leanne McAllister, a pastor and the director of Zoe Projects, an initiative designed to empower women both at home and around the world. Thank you so much for coming, Leanne. Oh, I'm delighted to be here. You know, you and I have a similar story. Um, God started doing something in your heart about mobilizing women, but that wasn't really where you started. No. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about how he did that in your heart. I was actually pastoring locally at a church called Living Waters Church in Fort Langley. I was an associate pastor there, um, you know, preaching, just doing everything but women's ministries. And God started to really get a hold of my heart. And I think it was because I would see so many women who were clearly gifted by God to do significant things. And every time I would kind of tap them on the shoulder and say, this is what I see in you, they would always brush it off. And uh, they just wouldn't move forward with what was plain to everybody else. And uh, I always say that leadership is born at that moment when you say somebody's got to do something. <laughs> and that moment was for me where I needed to help women recognize who they were, the deposit, the unique deposit God had placed in them, and then really mobilize them to action. And so that's where it started, just in my home church. And I was still associate, but then I began to work with women and, and training them and really essentially discipling them. You know, a lot of women, sometimes we can get upset because we say, oh, we're held back by this person or that person, or pastors don't believe women should have ministry, or whatever our reasons are. But really, most of the time, and this is my experience anyway, you can tell me if it's yours, but women hold themselves back by not believing in ourselves or coming up with all these reasons why we yeah. don't, we're not qualified or too busy or parenting or whatever. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, I think there's, there's two things that I've noticed, and I wouldn't limit this just to Canada. I would actually limit this to pretty much everywhere I've traveled. First, there's a confusion about the role of women in church and community. Um, but also, there's a lack of confidence. And, you know, I, I think women feel like they have to feel a certain way in order to, you know, kind of step off the ledge and, and to start something new, not understanding that no one really knows what we're doing. <laughs> like, like it's always, it's always like a, an act of faith or, or a leap off of a ledge. Yes, we prepare all of those kinds of things, but women keep waiting for something in order to move forward. And uh, I just firmly believe we, we have what we need to move forward. And uh, I, I always think we borrow confidence or we borrow courage from other people. Mm. And so I really try to do that for women. It's like, you can do this. You might not think you can, but you can, and I'm gonna walk alongside with you. Okay, let's dispel that myth for a minute because I wanna ask you this personally. Has God ever asked you to do something, like to step into a new area where you felt equipped, prepared, and <laughs> worthy of it? <laughs> Just answer that. Oh, I've never felt prepared for what God has, you know, done for me. It, it, when I started pastoring, it's a long story, but I ended up as an interim pastor at Living Waters Church, and uh, it was a small community at that time. And I remember the very first time, uh, it was my first Sunday, and I was in charge, and there was a part of me that was, you know, looking for the pastor to show up. <laughs> Everyone's looking to me, and uh, I remember communion. There I am giving out the communion elements, and then I turned around. My husband was playing bass behind me, and I said to him, what do I do now? <laughs> like, there was this terror in me. Yeah. Um, but step by step, I just learned how to pastor, how to, um, you know, how to work with people, how to work with teams, how to envision something, how to uh, figure out implementation, all of those kinds of things. And uh, that has carried me. I mean, that was probably 12 years ago. And that has carried me into my next phase of ministry. So I direct something called Zoe Projects. And I was just thinking the other day, there's no way I could be doing what I'm doing now, having not had the experience and, and you know, the, the leadership opportunities, the pastoral opportunities that, that God gave me. But it meant that I needed to say yes. You know, when that little church was looking for an interim pastor, I had to say, okay, there's no one else. Okay, yes, I'm gonna do it. And I, I think for women, they don't always 
say yes. Yes. There's, there's, <laughs> there's so much that God can do through a woman who will say yes, but they say no all the time. You know, yes. I'm raising my kids or I don't have enough education or I'm not qualified enough or nah, 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 and it goes on and on. But God's just looking for a yes. I had this conversation with a female coworker a few weeks ago and she was saying, um, yeah, I turned down opportunities to be on television or to public speak because I'm not really good at it. I don't really like it. It scares me. And I just, but I how do you I'm get like... good at something unless you do it? And I said to her, oh, you don't feel qualified. I said, perfect. You're the person God can use. And she was like, oh, Cheryl, <laughs> you're so mad at me. She was probably so annoyed. <laughs> I know. Right. But because I know that the way that God works usually is he puts you in shoes that feel too big. Like on the inside, you don't feel like you can fill that. And you do it in faith. You say yes, feeling unqualified, unworthy, and that there's surely, you can see people around you that are better, but God's given you that opportunity. Well, the thing, and this comes back to, to women in leadership. I mean, what, what are we doing actively to prepare women for leadership, to prepare women for missional activity? Um, you know, women need skills. Like there's a skill set to, to all of these things that, that uh, make an impact on our in our world and in Canada and abroad. Um, so what are we doing actively that's actually giving women the skills that they need in order to, to try? And, and God's gonna fill in the rest as he gives those experiences. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, we rely on God and all that he's given us, but we're also called to build skills. Right? So, and isn't that a great transition to Zoe Projects, yeah. which is exactly what you're doing? Tell me about that. Okay, so Zoe Projects uh, came at a time when I was pastoring. My, my husband actually uh, works for International Mission with the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. And so I was highly mobile because of what my husband did. I would do all of his um, overseas travels with him. We look after global workers and their families, which honestly is the best job in the world. Um, but as I was uh, traveling with Darcy, I would notice all of the work that our global workers and national partners were doing with women around the world. But we were not connecting with Canadians and letting them know, of, first of all, the needs of the vulnerable women around the world, but also ways that, that they could partner with them. And, uh, and so, you know, out of that moment, Zoe Projects was birthed. And so we work in four key areas. We work in education, economic empowerment, health, as well as human and sex trafficking. And, uh, you know, I always say the, the gospel is good news for women. It just is. The gospel speaks to the, to the value, worth, and dignity of the daughters. And uh, Zoe Projects, we, we certainly come alongside and help them with very real issues in their lives. But we do it with the good news of the gospel that, that God is for women, that, that um, uh, oh, you know, it just, he, he just longs for them to understand who they are and what they've been created for. Mm -hmm. And the enemy works over time to take that identity away from us, doesn't he? Oh, it's, it's a worldwide epidemic, actually. Um, you know, even misogyny towards women. Mm -hmm. uh, the way women are hated around the globe, yes. you know, it, it actually boggles my mind. Um, and then with that comes self-hatred that women have for themselves. And they can't even articulate it. Um, anyway, we, we need to bring the good news. Um, and that is how women are valued, how they have something to contribute, that their voices are important. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we need to elevate the daughters. And you think about how the enemy is stopping women here from stepping up when, the, when their voice and their compassion and their healing is so needed for women around the world. And it's his strategy that we don't do that. It's so frustrating. What has it been like for you as you've been able to remove those barriers, encourage and empower women and see them begin to step out and overcome those things? Well, when we started Zoe Projects, we knew about 10 minutes in that we needed to empower women here in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, because we, we couldn't just do that overseas. We, I, I, I think to myself, you, you, can't, you can't lead people to a place you yourself haven't been. Mm -hmm. And so if we're coming with this message of, of value and dignity and worth, then, then we have to clearly hold that message ourselves. 
And so, you know, we started Zoe Discipleship, which is really curriculum that we've developed that's Canadian-based and um, that uh, is written by Canadians that, that really speak that message to Canadians. Because when we raise women and empower women here in Canada, it will have a ripple effect, you know, as we go about our work, whether it's here in Canada, because our neighbors need to understand who they are. Mm -hmm. um, and our global neighbors need to understand that as well. I, it's been really amazing because I've been working on this probably for about three years now. And uh, I just heard a story of one, one of the women that went through our very first Zoe discipleship cohort. She actually gave her testimony in church yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I've been traveling so much, but I was home and I got to hear it firsthand. And she talked about how she um, had always felt a call to, um, to uh, almost like a pastoral call to, to those within her community, but she, she never felt the confidence. And there was a whole lot of reasons for that. But here she was, uh, she went through our course the, the, the first time we ever uh, ran it, and she is now leading a life group. She's leading in our church in significant ways, and she is taking that message and she's spreading it because she actually owns it. She's embodied that message. Uh, she understands who she is and she's just going for it. My husband was sitting next to me and he looked at me and he said, and that's why you do what you do. <laughs> and I went, yes, like I, I could have just, you know, leapt for joy yesterday morning as I heard that and thought, that's why we do what we do and Love we're going to keep going. You know, you're blessed to have someone in your home that cheers you on. Yes. Not everybody has that, but the work you're doing is so important. I just want to say thank you and, and cheer you on and please keep it up. Yeah. Thanks for sharing with us today. Thank you. Well, I just want to give some tough love to those of you who are watching this interview, especially women. Those of you who've been held back today by excuses, you're too busy, you're too young, you're too old, you're single, you're not married, you're not as good as the next person next to you, it's done. Let's stop holding ourselves back because there's a big, wide, hurting world out there that needs what you have to offer. And God has put something in every one of you that nobody else has that is unique. We need it. I'm going to implore you today to please examine your heart. Look at the areas the enemy has been lying to you and holding you back and start saying yes when God opens up those little doors. It's through those steps that you're going to go further and further and further and you're going to impact the world for Christ. And isn't that why we're all here I hope you're challenged and encouraged today. Thanks.